Ah, the Legion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we're gonna do our Mamelux Interim Guide. If we get 3,000 likes on the video, we'll also do a guide for the nation of Ethiopia. And guys, if you enjoy watching my videos, consider subscribing, would really mean the world to me, and encourage me to make more quality content. So to start our Mamelukian adventure, we need to first off go to our estates, give out the plus one admin, military, and diplo points, oversight by the Ulema, Patronage of the Arts for the Extra Prestige, Private Trade Fleet, Strong Duchy since we start with two available vassals, and that means we can have up to six Diplo relations, which is good since we will be getting Medina as a vassal also very shortly, as well as most likely Cyprus through the event. Plus a surprise vassal! Oh my god, this is gonna be so exciting! Give out the plus one leaders for the Demi and Tolerance of Heathens as well, and before we seize land, we're gonna develop the province of Fahim at once and I know that's not how you say it make sure you encourage development beforehand and you go for this once you can sell titles now and get 850 ducats pretty sweet we're gonna dev this up one more time however and we are also gonna be seizing land so we're only losing 0.20 monthly autonomy right now alliance wise everybody wants to be a friend but guess what we don't need friends we don't believe in friends friends. We're going to be vassalizing a lot of nations around us, expanding in the south into Arabia and at the same time into the Anatolian parts. So more than anything else, we are going to be getting ready to attack in a foul swoop the nation of Byzantium. That is correct, we are gonna be vassalizing Byzantium. You expected this, didn't you? I bet you expected this. We're gonna get a general, hopefully we get a one siege pip. Nope, we didn't get any, but we got a four shock. So all the battles will be won. Make sure we have our troops ready for the 11th of December once we do declare our war. 11th of December, not a day goes by without me thinking about the Byzantines. Alright, cool. We declare the war on the Byzantines. That means that we can uh, deliver our troops here. Who says deliver? Jesus, I'm weird sometimes, aren't I? Make sure you attack them and take over the south parts first. And as you are taking over the south parts, bring reinforcements, take over the north. It is vital that we vassalize Byzantium. Don't worry about the minus two stability. You'll get that back fairly shortly. In the meanwhile, start getting better relations with Medina. You do this by uh, getting a royal marriage, influencing them, sending them gift, improving relations and allying them after the war is finished. It is vital that you do this because we need to have Medina as a vassal. We get an event that gives all of Medina to Hejaz. So you would basically, instead of having two vassals, you have one stronger vassal. Okay, we actually have a really interesting event. This event either gives us more legalism or mysticism. Because we start off with a lot of legalism, what we're going to do is we're going to debase currency, which means we got two corruption. Oh no! But actually, if we click this then we lose two corruption so that basically means we got 173 ducats for free and we ended up having a thousand ducats in our treasury from the very beginning of the game now i want you to go mysticism why because mysticism gives extra morale of armies missionary strength but most importantly morale of armies because after this war against the byzantines we are gonna have a war against you've guessed it the ottomans and the ottomans are a pretty strong enemy. If you don't know how to deal with them, you can actually lose even as the Mamluks. However, if you do lose as the Mamluks against the Ottomans in the early game, then you need to get good. Send the rest of the army. I managed to get a second general here and this guy actually has a siege pip and some fire damage, which is useless in this age, but whatever. And with the sieges over here, we're going to be vassalizing Byzantium as well as get some money from them. Aggressive expansion wise, you get very little aggressive expansion compared to the benefits that you have here. And we're going to make cut Karakoyunlu and Aragon are next to uh, Rivils. We also can send a few uh, scornful insults and the sorts around so that we get a little bit more power projection. And because we're just absolutely awesome, we will be declaring this war right now. Actually, hold up. I lied. Not right now. First, we're going to ally these guys so that we can make them our vassals. There you go. That's one. And after one month, we can make them our vessel. 22nd of March, we now have vassalized uh, Medina. And with our mission here, we can do the holy 
cities, inherit Medina for Hejaz, or not inherit, I recommend inherit, so you have one vassal rather than two, there you go, making it easier and giving you one extra diplo slot there. And now for la pièce de résistance, we shall be attacking the Ottomans. Let's go with uh, Gelibolu actually as our war target, as we, f I feel fairly confident we can take this in the war. We might even cobbledry Tunis, but I don't want to drag the war for too long at the start. I'm gonna just uh, focus on the Ottomans and uh, go against the Tunisians afterwards. Make sure you attack them before they get tech 5. This is important. This is also the reason we attacked Byzantium and vassalized them. The Ottomans, before they get tech 5, military tech 5, that is, are insanely weak compared to how strong they are after tech 5. So if you do vassalize Byzantium, feed them back all of these sweet cores before that, then it's gonna make it really easy to crush the Ottomans in the early game. Since this is most of their economical base gone in one easy war. Whenever you're starting ruler dies, you're gonna have a few options of getting another ruler from the available cultures that you start off with. You actually have Egyptian, Syrian, and Circassian, which is your main culture, by the way, as well as Bedouin if you accept it. I have accepted it as it's 50% cheaper, and it is good to accept Bedouin. So now, it is important that you choose somebody who is either Egyptian or Syrian. Why? This means they're gonna have less of a claim, and that means you're gonna get less legitimacy when you get the new ruler, but if you do so, then you will get the maximum amount of bonuses from your government interactions. So 360 ducats because of the amount of Egyptian provinces that we have. So based on whichever culture you choose, the more provinces of that culture, the more bonuses you get from the government interaction. Because of the same reason, we get 9,000 manpower from all the Egyptian culture provinces. If we were to choose a Circassian leader, we would have gotten zero manpower, zero ducats, because we have no Circassian provinces. Unless we're crazy and we start uh, converting these guys to Circassian somehow, which I don't recommend by the way. We also can denounce these sect practices and the other thing here, as well as if you want, you can lower your war exhaustion and remember, getting mercenaries is not a bad thing. In fact, if you're struggling with the war, you have enough money to get as many mercenaries as you want and we still have a little bit of land force limit available, so let's say for example we can recruit the Grand or Free Company. Remember before you recruit that, you have 12 of professionalism well you start off with 10% but I recruited two generals so that's an extra two so before you recruit mercenaries slack in recruitment so you get manpower instead of losing that manpower on mercenaries this war is actually extremely easy the Mamluks are really one of the strongest nations at the start and if you don't allow the Ottomans to get their uh, full strength then it's gonna be a very very easy war and this peace deal obviously I'm gonna go for all of the Byzantine lands and Silistre as as well as the province of Ohri for one reason and one reason alone. I want to have a connection to Serbia here. Don't stay in this war for longer than you need to be. Once you can get 100% Peace out, as we have other fish to fry around us. And with our strong Byzantine vassal here, we're gonna make a lot of damage to the Ottomans to come. Make sure before you release Bulgaria, because they're gonna get the province of Ohri also, that you get a claim on Serbia first off. You will not be able to get the claim once you release the vassal, so get the claim first. Now we can send all of our troops back home. We got some uh, wars we need to do in this area. We also can get some new rivals apparently. Dom Damn. Wasn't Timurids already an option? All right, we're gonna go for the Poles as well. And Timurids looks like it's about to collapse. They only have Coruscant left as a vassal. Can bring our boys back also from uh, spying on the Turks. Get a few claims in the meanwhile. And we can start spying on other people next to us. Looks like Akoyunlu is beating us to the punch here. I wanted to attack uh, Dulkadir, but apparently so does Akoyunlu. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be attacking Karaman and Akoyunlu with uh, all of their sneaky sneaky allies here by increasing our relations with Fezan we can diplomatically vassalize them and we're gonna do the same thing with a Ramazan here take note if you have a lot of vassals they might start rebelling so if you have the uh, divert trade enacted you might want to switch it off until you integrate a few of your vassals at least they have to be at peace actually so I guess I have to wait until they finish the war with Dulkadir then in that case I can attack these guys in the meanwhile should be a fairly easy war and and it's going to be the first of my expansion into Yemen. 
since we have the claims to go into Yemen and it is going to be beneficial for us. Going into Yemen means that we can secure a lot of the trade here in the uh, Gulf of Aden and then make it go all the way into Alexandria afterwards. Since Akko Yunlu is not joining in their allies war here because of occupied and besieged provinces, weirdly enough they were about to lose this war but Dulkadir somehow managed to turn it around against Akko Yunlu and Karaman and Ramazan. In fact they're fighting against all odds and somehow kind of winning. In fact I can probably vassalize them too. Yes I can. Barely can vassalize them. So let's see how that war goes. I am also going to be attacking uh, the Rasid since they don't have any alliances for the time being and they're basically just a very easy target for me right now. Like the old saying goes, war goes. Oh I forgot to send my army here as well so we can finish these guys off. We got a core of Fadl on Al Jawuf and we are going to take the other one for ourselves directly. Can we get an F in the chat for Dulkadir? They fought valiantly. I don't know how this is going to end, but I'm pretty sure. Actually, you know what? Let's make let's make a challenge here. If Dulkadir wins the war, then you have to subscribe to the channel. If they lose the war, you still have to subscribe to the channel. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Now we can get our claim on Kosovo too. So that means we can release Bulgaria right after this uh, war of mind. Well, better yet, three wars of mine. Ah! gonna assign my leader here yep he's a pretty decent guy so we can have an easier time sieging all of these uh rassid. i said that like there's even more than one it's just one don't judge me wait what the knights have raided my coasts oh you've been a bad knight haven't you bad knight i'm gonna have to punish you aren't i also looks like dulkadir is getting attacked by the ottomans so my 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 money's on Dul dulkadir it's even odds even odds let's also fully annex these guys here give the core back to Fadl and take the other one for ourselves. Same situation in uh, Miklav here. Take all the schnitzel for ourselves and we're gonna have to wait on these guys to finish the fort first. I want to release Bulgaria before I declare the next war on the Ottomans. So the next war against the Ottomans is actually gonna be uh, by me attacking Serbia and uh, because Serbia is being proclaimed guaranteed uh, by uh, the Ottomans, they're gonna join in that war. And that means I can completely wreck the Ottomans' economy. But before I do that, I'd really like to... Oh, there you go, it finished. All right, perfect. So I can vassalize uh, these guys. Dar Yago. And this is finished, the fort in Sana Capitulated. Meaning that we can actually piece them out without even fighting this, but why not fight it? It's always good to fight battles since it means you get more army tradition. And army tradition is important. Always remember that, kid. It's perfect time to attack the uh, Serbians here and of course that means we're gonna rush for the Kosovo gold mine as well as make sure that the Ottomans do not cross into the Balkans divide and conquer my boys divide and conquer after we've taken all of the Balkan holdings they have we're gonna switch on over and go into the Anatolian parts since we do have the armies to crush the Ottomans especially after we've weakened them but uh they have gone to tech 5 so they do have really really strong units the Serbian army has been wiped out that's pretty easy and we can carpet siege with the rest of our armies here now looks like the bosnians are going to get stack wiped as well in a few moments take note that even with the defensiveness edict enacted the ottomans are sieging down forts like they're paper forts it is insane how amazing the ottoman siege ability is in the early game they're about to take another one of my forts here in al karakti and uh, i'm also not in the mood to lose my prosperity in cairo so because of that i'm actually gonna piece them out here take all the money i can take which is about maximum amounts war reps and there's two options either take these two provinces so that i can attack the uh, knights as well and take care of those pests or i go for humiliate because i have 89 power Projection. I don't need to humiliate that much right now, so I'm gonna go for this. And with this ends the war against the Ottomans. The second war, anyway. When it comes to the Serbs here, I want to actually make them my vassals because I cannot directly take land from them. And I feel they would be a good addition to my already growing army of vassals. So let's do that. We'll make them a vassal. They're gonna be obviously disloyal and have too many vassals as it is. But not to fear, we're about to finish integrating Hejaz and we will start integrating these guys also now. Through the power of editing, we fast forward to after we finished the war against uh, Akko Yunlu and Karaman. So I've been improving relations with the remainder of my vassals. I've integrated Fezan, Fadl, and Hejaz, which were pretty easy to integrate. Now what I'm going to be doing and what I'm going to be focusing on mainly is uh, taking as much Turkish land as possible since I want to have a uh, culture switch to Turkish in order to form the nation of uh, Rum. That means that we're going to take these 
provinces from uh, Akwa Yunlu important that we take these provinces. Coalition wise, almost nobody. We're also going to be taking all the money that we can take from them, as well as trade power, war reps, and council whatever interesting alliances they might have, such as Kandar here. Now, for the nation of Kandar, sadly for them, we're going to fully annex them because we need all of their provinces since they are all Turkish culture. We can fully annex them, and that's going to mean a small coalition of mainly Turkish Beyliks, which uh, we really don't need to worry about since we have a truce with most of them, or if we don't have a truce with them, then it's Kandar and nobody cares about Kandar. Regardless, we will also have to declare war on the Ottomans again, since we need most of the Anatolian parts in our hold. Make sure we make them our rival once more. Do not concentrate dev here since you want to have uh, Turkish a predominant culture in your nation. So you want as much development in the Turkish provinces as possible. Uh, I recommend you actually switch your capital to a Turkish province in order to concentrate dev in your new capital. Making more Turkish balance than Egyptian one. The truce is over with the Ottomans and we will attack them. But before we do that we're going to vassalize Cyprus. Diplo and now we're ready for the Ottomans here. We're gonna set our war goal as Coachelli, surprisingly. We're not going for reconquest because we are conquering Anatolian parts. We're not conquering the Balkans right now. This is important. Remember, conquest. Apparently, Sauron is now a thing, as is His and Kaifa. They basically split Akoyunlu between themselves. I'm gonna use this army to focus on the Tunisians. Whenever you wait for your truces to finish off with the Ottomans, make sure you consolidate your power base in the Arabian Peninsula. I've pretty much taken care of everybody else. These guys are right now in a coalition against me, so until that coalition dissipates, I am not gonna attack them for the time being at least. I feel like I might have been a little bit overconfident here. The Ottomans likely will take Cairo from me, even with the defensiveness edict. And guess what? Please don't fall at 7% by the way. Oh, thank god. Uh, and guess what? They destroyed my fleet! They actually destroyed my fleet, man. And they've even taken a few more forts here. Also, gotta point this out, they're literally just ignoring my fort. Hate when that happens, but it does happen sometimes. Uh, I used my fleet so I can navally barrage this fort, and I was planning on doing the same with these two here, which is why I set Coachelli as my war target, but because my fleet was crushed, um, I'm gonna struggle with that now. And that it was crushed mainly because the Ottomans were reinforced by Tunisians. Surprisingly, my vassal swarm is actually defeating the Ottomans by themselves, and and I think they might even win these battles. Nope, the Ottoman reinforcements are gonna crush them. It was fun whilst it lasted. It was definitely fun while it lasted. Unless, hold up a sec, they won the second battle as well. Nice, very nice. And we can get a couple of our ideas here and even get ahead of tech bonuses and unlock our second idea group. Nice. We're gonna have to take back Cairo from the Ottomans, however, and continue our sieges here. We managed to get our fleet back and because we pushed out the Tunisians from the war. All right, well, after a little bit more fighting, I can finally piece out the Ottomans, and I'm gonna take exactly this from them. The reason I'm taking this is because I am gonna wait for Eretnid separatists bring forth the nation of Eretna, which means that I can have a very easy target to attack and destroy. Also gonna be able to release the nation of Germian, which is another Beylik, and I will feed it back the central parts, which are its cores and integrated right after. Basically in the next war we're gonna use Reconquest CB against the Ottomans, feed back all the cores and uh, afterwards integrate our vassals. In fact I'm gonna integrate Byzantium right now actually. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit so we can see what exactly I mean when I'm talking about culturally converting our nation so that we can form a rum. And by traveling into the future we now can switch on over to Turkish except I need 5% more Turkish culture in order to switch to Turkish. So there's a few options. Either you culturally convert some provinces to Turkish or you unstate some parts of your country and restate them later on. I've also switched my capital from Cairo to the province of Hudavendigar so that whenever I uh, concentrated development or pillaged it went here so that means I got more Turkish culture in this province. We are gonna unstate the state of Bahari which should give us about 50% there you go. That's exactly 50%. Beautiful. 93 points and we have switched on over to Turkish. And now in order to restore the nation of Rum, we 
We just need the province of Erzurum. I completely forgot about this. All right, well, see you in a couple of seconds. And I'm back, and we now have Erzurum. That was a little bit embarrassing, but it's A-OK. -okay. Guys, I just want to point out that in order to restore room, all you need to do is be a Turkish culture nation and own these particular cities. You do not need to have admin tech 10 or anything of the sorts. Also, you got to be in the Muslim religious group, so it doesn't work as orthodox click the button and that means we got the new and improved rummy ideas including morale of armies land force limit discipline core creation cost reduction construction cost and other goodies we also can adopt the title of mia khalifa again and most importantly we got the ottoman government type which means that we now can recruit zejani sari hold up we first got to make this into a state i didn't make it a state so it's easier to switch on over to Turkish. So, right, we can recruit Janissaries, which means we are basically the Ottomans. That's correct. This whole run has been basically so that we can turn into the Ottomans. When it comes to ideas, you want to go for quantity ideas early on to help you out in the many wars that you're going to have. Diplomatic as your second idea for two reasons. First off, two extra diplomats are going to help you integrate two extra vassals at the same time. Extra diplo relations and diplo reputation helps with the same thing province war score cost reduction is massive for taking more provinces and you get the lowered impact on stability from diplomatic actions that means for example if you know cb it's not as painful and a third idea i personally prefer going for exploration and making my way into the land down under as well as into the new world but hey it's up to you you don't need to go for this if you don't want to other great idea sets include trade ideas for maximizing the trade profit in your trade nodes economic to get a massive boost to your economy or religious if you want to go for a one faith or a one culture even admin can be helpful and quality ideas if we get 3,000 likes on the video I'm also gonna do another guide for Ethiopia and tell you what guys you can check me out on my twitch channel I do daily streams almost and I'd be more than happy to see you guys over there just check the link in the description I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.